Hello and welcome. This is Vince of VincePrep.com. A client recently reached out. He has applied to Harvard, Stanford, Wharton, and he's wondering how to begin preparing for those interviews, hoping, ho hoping he gets it, uh, invited. And apologies, I'm dressed very casually. It's, it's winter here, and I'm in, working from California. I just wanted to directly answer his question because it's faster to talk than to type. So first of all, I, and this is what I told him by email and I felt a little bad doing it, but it was the height of, of application, you know, busy period a week ago when he asked me this question is, I have tons of resources. Uh, I have a page about the Harvard interview and the Stanford MBA interview and the Wharton MBA interview. I also have multiple videos on all of these topics. And so essentially, <laughs> um, start with what I've already shared, the free resources that are out there. But I also, that still so it feels a little cheap because he's, he's hired me to be his consultant. So I feel like I should give him something more and I will, we'll have a one-to-one -one session soon. But this video is just sort of an overview of the comparisons of those three interview processes at a very kind of high level. So I'll start with Wharton because it's the oddball, it's the team-based discussion and it, it, it's a, it's not like, well, all, all three of these are each quite different. Um, as I just said, Wharton is team-based discussion and that has its own dynamics and issues. And a, a friend and colleague of mine, Adam Marcus, has a very interesting opinion about the, his theories about the Wharton interview, and I, I quite agree with him. I'll share those in a bit, crediting, crediting Adam. Stanford uh, is a behavioral interview. Uh, and so that's the short answer is Stanford is behavioral. Wharton is team-based, Stanford is behavioral. And Harvard is perhaps my favorite because it is unpredictable and it is, uh, all about your ability to deal with that unpredictability. As they have said on their blog, it starts with your application and then goes off of the application as quickly as the interviewer wants to. And the interviewer can ask anything she wants in any order she wants. And most importantly, she loves to ask usually follow-up questions to whatever you've said. And so it is a very realistic one-to-one uh, -one version of the case method, right? Which is, uh, there is preparation, there is content, the case, and, and the discussion is centered around the case, but the conversation can go all kinds of directions and it never goes in, in a, a, a predictable way or in a predictable flow. So the interview is designed to, I think, very, I think Harvard does the best job of matching their interview style to their classroom uh, culture. If interviews are supposed to match the school culture, and I think to a large degree they do, Harvard hits the bullseye. This interview style that they have, the only thing they could do that would be any more authentic was, as IMD uh, does, force you to go to campus and participate in a simulated case discussion led by a real professor that's evaluated by people you know, behind the glass watching you. Um, that would be cool. IMD can do that. It's 80 students in a graduating class. Last time I checked, it's tiny. I'm talking about IMD in Switzerland. Harvard's huge. They couldn't possibly recreate an actual case discussion for everyone who's invited to the interview. Um, so the next best thing they can do is have a very rapid fire one-to-one -one interview. So check out my sources, check out my information for TBD and practice, frankly, in a group the best person for that is Andrea Sperry. I always send my clients to Andrea, Andrea Sperry, S-P-A-R-R-E-Y, -E Sperry, S-P-A-R-R-E-Y, Andrea Sperry. She's a boothie, but her Wharton uh, TBD simulations are the best, in my opinion, and clients have thanked me for years for sending them to her. She runs them online, and she does, an, I think, an excellent job. Adam's comment, um, I'm sort of giving all these props to my AGAC colleagues. Andrea was AGAC president year before me, two years before me, two, two years in a row, because she's such a, an amazing cheerleader for AGAC. Adam's now involved in the board, I think, as well. But anyway, my point is, Adam sort of says that the, uh, the downside of the TBD is that it, it eliminates people who are on the margins, and it makes, it sort of has a sort of, 
lowest common denominator factor where everyone's a team player. If you talk too much, you might get penalized in the TBD. If you don't talk at all or don't talk enough, you might get penalized. But in fact, we want thoughtful, quiet people who say one thing an hour, but what they say is incredibly on point, right? Uh, and we sometimes need people who can't stop talking once in a while um, to whatever, add something to the group dynamic. But Wharton's process more or less favors, and I think the admissions office at Wharton would, would counter this with some data perhaps, but I think his point is really interesting. Um, but definitely in the process, you do want to be in that middle group that is sort of that Goldilocks, you know, not too much, not too little, not too hot, not too cold spot. Um, the way to prep for Stanford is practice behavioral interviewing and look on my site and at my videos. I have probably more behavioral interviewing resources than almost any other counselor. At least I've been spent 20 years thinking deeply about it because I am an actor. My background is storytelling from an arts perspective. Um, and so you tell me about a behavioral interview and I get all excited because it reminds me of, um, of what I love, which is improv and storytelling. Telling an authentic story. I did no prep for this video. I just simply turned on my camera and you can tell it's, it's getting a little bit long here. So I need to wrap this up. Check out the behavioral interviewing stuff for Stanford and, and use that method because the, predictably the school really does deliver a behavioral interview. I don't know, frankly, is, is the Stanford MBA program that much more behavioral in its, it, it probably borrows more from touchy-feely, interpersonal dynamics, psychology, West Coast, whatever um, stuff. So maybe, sure, a behavioral interview for Stanford uh, makes sense. I, I think there are huge downsides to relying Look, all these, pro all these methodologies have their flaws. A, a team-based discussion penalizes people who don't talk enough and those who talk too much and kind of looks for everyone trying to be the same in the middle. And I think that hurts uh, the Wharton brand or the Wharton experience um, of who actually can get in. It, it maybe keeps people out who still deserve to be there. Uh, the Stanford process, I think, forces you to be a bit unnatural in answering behavioral questions. For example, what if they ask for something that never happened to you? Tell me about a time where your subordinate uh, couldn't live up to your expectations. How did you help him or her, you know, pull their weight? What if you've never had a subordinate? I mean, I mean my point is, like, are you supposed to make something up or just simply say, well, that never happened to me, but here's something close. It, I get behavioral interviewing. I see the values of it. I also wish Stanford mixed it up a bit more, but it is what it is. It's going to be a behavioral interview. Three or four questions will be asked with 10 minutes maybe of follow-up details. So the key here for Stanford is don't monologue. Don't do what I'm doing right now and talk for 10 minutes. <laughs> Say a little bit and expect they are professional and can interrupt, not interrupt you, but they can dig in and ask you to follow up. The key with Harvard, this is the last thing I'll say is, and this is very self-serving for me, I do this for a living, um, but practice with a professional who's gonna read your application, take 20 minutes as they claim they do, highlight it, figure out what they wanna dig into and ask you, what about this, why this, why that, how did this work out? How did you make this decision? How did you get that result? And then be smart enough to improvise from what you have said, follow up with what you talked about. A, a client years, years ago, a client of mine whose English wasn't great, who ended up going to Columbia, so great final result, sponsored by uh, the government uh, at a, of a certain country. The interviewer was simply curious about one of her volunteer activities and asked about it out of curiosity. But because this woman works in government and her job is to have the correct answer, she panicked. She, could, she didn't know how to just sort of guesstimate or approximate an answer because she couldn't research the exact answer to this general question, oh, how does that work in your country? Or is that a popular thing to do in your country? Um, she froze like a deer in the headlights. And I think in that moment was, was rejected because if that had happened in the case study, there is a certain amount of BS <laughs> that HBS people are really good at doing where they can just sort of talk like I'm doing right now off the top of their heads and make some amount of sense 
Uh, that's why I would never go to HBS. I turned down Harvard. I, you've heard me say this before. I have turned down Harvard twice, and I'm crazy. People think I'm nuts for doing so because, uh, you know, who turns down Harvard? But I don't need that skill. I can riff. You're hearing me do it right now. I, I won't tell you where I would go. It depends on what I wanted. There are days I'd say I'd go to INSEAD, but um, that's just me. And I'm too old to go to MBA anyway, and this is not about me, it's about you, so thanks for watching. Best of luck with your interviews and everything it is you're doing. Thanks again, best of luck, and best wishes to you.